Hello, dearest friends, dearest beautiful co-creator souls of love and light. This is Nanari, Princess of the Sea, coming to you with a new video. This video is inspired by many who have been coming to me on this topic and posts I have seen in groups that I'm on on various posts on Facebook and whatnot. And it also has to do a little bit with my journey as well in this. And so the, the ergo, the title for this video, Getting Over the Twin Soul Dynamic, um, I'm going to utilize, uh, without actually providing his name, because I didn't ask whether he wanted me to or not. Um, however, I'm going to talk about this and I'm going to utilize the context of this gentleman's post in particular because it seems to sum up in a more concentrated form the, what the majority of the posts that I've been re um, seeing on various groups on Facebook, the energy and vibration of those same uh, different posts from other people, and also people who I've mentor and people who have come to me with you know, messages and questions um, on a daily basis about this topic. And again, also having to do with my own journey. And if you recall a couple of videos back when I did the um, DNA activation video and I spoke about the story of Sanat Kumara. Sanat Kumara is um, a beautiful story and I will leave the link for that video that I did that talks about this story because it parlays into the way of getting over the twin soul dynamics, so to speak. And in a sense, it's really free from getting over the dynamic itself, per se. It's It goes in context with all of my recent videos having to do with um, addictions and obsessions and releasing things and, and letting go. And it becomes a new way of seeing things because in the story of Sanat Kimura, what happened with... Um, that story just to give a recap on it and I would invite you to listen to it so that you could really understand the context of it. What it is is that he ends up dissolving the lower energies if you will that we call it from an earthly standpoint. Now in spirit and soul there is no such thing as higher or lower or up or down or you know anything else. There's just different fre frequencies and vibrations that we tune into. And when we come here to the earth, we have this concept of duality. So in duality, we say higher or lower. But really what he does by the end of the story is, is he releases all of those things, for lack of a better word, that are free from being love, um, which is the energy of love, God, source, the master artist, the Tao, the universal mind, whatever you choose to call it. And he comes into this space of divine love. And this gentleman, he had put a post, and like I said, this encapsulates so much um, of the majority of everyone who has been saying similar things. He had posted about his twin soul, and he said, I can no longer feel her anymore. It's as if she is gone, a distant memory now. Now, if you remember from the story of Sanat Kimura, um, Kumara, Kum, I say it different ways, so <laughs> anyway, um, if you remember from that story, he comes to that point where he no longer feels her in the way that he did once before. And what it kind of comes to is there's several different resonances that, that are going on here. And I want to address those different resonances. First of all, I believe I have t spoken about this in my other Twin Soul videos before. If I have been free from doing so, I will speak about it now in detail. Because this is also a dynamic that has come up uh, over and over and over again with Twin Souls who are going through the melding of the bodies and who are having issues of you know coming into union and, and things of that nature. Which is this. There are many twin souls that are meeting and coming together here on this planet. Now, relative to the number of twins, uh, sorry, relative to the number of 
people we have on this planet, which is approximately 8 billion people, the amount of twin souls that are here on this planet are actually very few. Okay, there is a very small group. Now out of that, there are some twin souls that are not here on their last life. As a general rule, now of course there is always exceptions to the rule, if you will. As a general rule though, the majority of the twin souls that are here on this planet that are here to come together to bring divine love, unconditional love, the song of the soul, basically the song of universal love, source love, in union, they are very small and they are in their last lives. Now the other twin souls that are coming together and are unable to come into full union and have like this gentleman come to this point where he no longer feels her anymore. The reason for that for him is because he and his twin soul are free from being in their last lives. As again, as a general rule, there are exceptions to this rule. As a general rule though, twin souls do come together in their last life and have very few, you've heard me talk about this before, have very few lives together relative to the amount of lives they've had on these, this earth and in the cosmos um, of infinite dimensions, parallel universes and whatnot. So the reason for this is to keep the purity of the twin soul union. So we have other soulmates, other near twins, other relationships that we have and connections that we have and unions that we have with other beings in a manner of spiritual partnerships and you know other types of relationships, relating ships, um, our ships of love that come into relating together. We have many of those that occur so we have what we call our life lessons from an earthly standpoint or as Source has given it to me in my second book, Stepping into Spiritual Oneness, that I published almost nine years ago now, Soul Rememberings. Because we are really free from learning anything. We already and always have everything within us. We come here with everything already within us. It's more or less that we are here to remember who we are. So the purity of twin soul relationships is kept so that all of the what we call from an earthly standpoint karma all of the life lessons and karma is nothing more than just cause and effect okay you have chosen this in a soul agreement with someone and the effect is this okay um, or in your divine free choice or what we call divine free will you make a choice and then the effect of it is this that's all karma is karma we've labeled karma as something as bad or what have you it really is free from being such but we have those other relationships with other souls so that we can keep the purity of the twin soul union as pure as possible now does that mean that when we come together with our twin souls that we still do not have the melding of the bodies and we still do not have um, the the going through the um, you know enlightened beautiful phase when we first come together when we're in awe and wonder and, and oneness and connection with our twin soul in complete union and then we yeah, most most twin souls you know have this breaking apart time you know where they're freaking out and it's often called the runner dynamic or the chaser and whatnot where really neither one is a runner or a chaser it's more or less the inner work that you are required to do and I've spoken about this in my other videos as well that it's really you and your twin soul both separately um, because you are individuals still and together then you will do the work of whatever it is that you were only to he able to heal on your own as far as you could go. You now heal it still individually and together but you do it through the union of the twin soul dynamic. But for this gentleman in particular he and his twin soul are free from being in their last life so there are a lot of twin souls that are here on this planet who are connecting who will not be together in this life 
Um, and this may be disheartening for some. Some souls who, who are twin souls and know each other as twin souls know that it's their last life, like myself and my twin soul. And at some point we will come into full union, even if it's on our last breath. And the same can be said for the other twin souls that are here on this planet who are still struggling. But that is one key factor is to really know and understand that some twin souls are free from being here in their last life. And so they will meet up again in their last life to have that full union. Now, um, they are twin souls that, that, as I said, like myself and my twin soul who are in their last lives. Um, people like my dear friends, Lee and Sherry. Hello, Lee and Sherry, who just got married a few days ago. Absolutely beautiful twin soul marriage and wedding and union. And um, it was absolutely just breathtaking and the official video I'm sure will come out soon we got to all watch it live and I'll be at the buffering it was absolutely amazing and beautiful and really a testament to what true union and a true wedding for twin souls is really about it's a model and example and so I wanted to give a shout out to the two of them and say how much I honor them and and appreciate them uh, they're my soul family we are soul family and and I love them you know so very much and congratulations to the two of you for the celebration of your union now um, before I go any further into this I would like to also just make reference to a couple of things one is the fact that there has been some people who have come forward and said that uh, twin souls are not a relationship they're a union um, there are they are a union not being a couple um, that you don't have romance uh, in twin soul union and whatnot what I would like to say to that is simply this and I've said this in in my articles um, about other issues um, in the world so I'm going to apply it to the twin soul dynamic now Words are often becoming more and more and have been through the millennia the means by which wars are started. The reason is is that we come from this context of and, and I will take it from the context of the Bible because the Bible or the Quran or other holy books that we deem holy the human consciousness has a tendency to make this be this is the right way and the only right way and if you don't abide by this right way you are wrong you are bad you are delusional I'm going to fight with you you know we're going to war in some form or fashion now that's only the consciousness collectively warring with itself if you will what it's also indicative of is that we place too much emphasis on the fact that a specific word has to mean a specific thing and it can only mean it's that specific thing if you notice in all of my videos and all of my writings and whatever I use uh, channelings and what have you I utilize words to mean the same thing for instance God to me God is love God is not some anthropomorphic being that's up in the sky who's gonna smite you down if you do not behave um, you know kind of thing which is what we were all indoctrinated in into with our religions of the world okay I utilize God in uh, the context of God is love lot is God is source God is this vibration this source energy that created all that is everything okay so you will hear me use the Tao love source the master artist um, the universal mind universal heart which is the Lemurian way of saying such um, the Tao there's a, a million and different one names and it all means the same energy so it's the same thing with twin souls twin souls are a relationship why because you are relating everything on this earth and in the cosmos we relate to I relate to a chair when I sit in it okay I relate to the air that I breathe we the air and I are having a relationship because we are communing together we are coming together in union in some form or fashion so yes twin souls are a relationship relating ship the ships of love relating 
It can also be known as a union. It can also be known as a spiritual partnership, a divine union, a sacred union. Um, our group on Facebook is Sacred Path, Sacred Union. There, again, are a million and different one names, and they all actually mean the same thing. Why? Because in source energy, source energy does not make the distinction between it all because of the words. It makes the distinction in the vibration and that is the difference. You can say the word relationship all you want and it depends upon the vibration and intention that you have behind that word. If you have the intention of saying that twin souls are only a union and not a relationship, then you're being exclusive and you're cutting off that infinite possibility. And again, this is what brings about wars. So in a relating of peace, Peace is free from being the absence of conflict. It is an embracing and understanding that we can unconditionally love and unconditionally accept another, no matter which way they choose to say something. We are all actually saying the same thing, just in, a, in infinite different forms. And it's honoring those differences. Because if we all had the same word for the same thing, it would be like being a robot. And we are free from being robots. So now to take this further um, down the beautiful rabbit hole, <laughs> we're going to explore this concept a little bit further about what this gentleman also wrote. Because after he had written saying that he could no longer feel his twin soul anymore, it was if she was gone and a distant memory, for him, it's the combination of a couple of things, and it could be the same for you. Each twin soul couple, each twin soul union has a different set of soul agreements. So what may relate for this gentleman may not relate for you in your situation. However, what I'm attempting to do here in this video is give you a, several different possibilities that can be occurring for you through using his example here as a model um, in which you it helps you to get over the twin soul dynamic. And the reason that I offered to call it getting over the twin soul dynamic is again it goes back to what I just said about words. We can label this the twin soul, the twin flame, the divine partnership, all of these different names. It really is free from mattering. What matters is the vibration and what matters is the love. So whatever you want to call it, the connection, the vibration, the love within you first always and with source always and then with the one in physical who is your twin soul and with all um, it was a concept that I brought forth in the four layers back several videos ago um, in my twin soul series of those four layers that is what matters the label that you choose to put on it matters not it's the vibration connection and love that is there that is what matters so he further wrote there were some other comments from people um, you know in response and then he had further wrote saying that he felt an impersonal sense of peace and that he was just kind of left wondering what all the pain and suffering as well as all the bliss and epiphany was truly all about so he also said that he prayed that when he was through all of this that his heart would open once again and he would love this world and every aspect of it unconditionally and utterly. And those two things again is very indicative of what many twin souls are you know experiencing right now and what really is occurring is and the reason for all the pain and all the suffering, all the bliss and all the epiphany. Again, I'm going to refer back to a couple of things. One is the Sanat Kumara um, and that story that um, 
it encapsulates it so beautifully because in his, in the story he goes through all the pain all the suffering and then moments of bliss and epiphany only to find out that all of those things all of those extremes of the bliss and the pain and the suffering and epiphany uh, were the duality and free from being the actual oneness and the moment that he let go of the obsession if you will of those two extremes and came into balance then that sense of love was there and so that's that impersonal sense of peace that this gentleman was talking about that he feels he's actually stepped into whether he's aware of it or not he's actually stepped into unconditional love divine love and divine peace and on one hand it is impersonal it's impersonal because this love is actually what source is and source itself is love and so it encompasses all that is and on one side of it it is very impersonal and it goes to a quote that's by Osho and it goes like this don't seek don't search don't ask don't knock don't demand relax if you relax it comes if you relax it is there if you relax you start vibrating with it and I found that to be very profound because what this gentleman is experiencing in this impersonal sense of peace is um, like the story of what happened with Buddha Buddha in his quest for enlightenment went from one extreme to the other he had the extreme bliss and epiphany of having everything he could ever desire that his father had given him um, you know all the riches and everything that he could ever desire to the pain and suffering of the extremes of not having enough food to eat of not having any clothes of being you know uh, in, in essence abandoned so to speak and walking the path of a renunciate and, and living that extreme life and so pain and suffering and a bliss and epiphany are both the extremes that the Buddha had experienced and then he came into balance and his true actual enlightenment and that is actually what the illumination phase of the twin soul dynamic is is where you come into this impersonal sense of peace or this 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 sense of being in that divine love where you're actually vibrating with it you're vibrating with that love and so on the one hand it is very impersonal because you're just rejoining with source and the reason I can say that it's impersonal is because I've had 11 near-death experiences and if you have seen my video on this on YouTube here you will know about this and in each of those near-death experiences when I came into connection with Source there was just this overwhelming sense of love and a light that was so bright that it almost looked like it was dark so to speak but it really wasn't it was like the combination of light and dark together and it was very impersonal it wasn't like I had a specific person there that I loved it was just this resonance of being this vibration of being and so that is what this gentleman whether he realizes it or not is what he is vibrating with now the other aspect of this having to do with being in the essence of wondering what all the pain and suffering is about and him praying that when he's through all of this that his heart will open again that he can love the world in every aspect of it this comes into play with a couple of different things one is a concept that I talked about in my second book stepping into spiritual oneness and this was something that's called expectation and intention when we have an expectation and again this also goes back to Sanat Kumara um, the story as well because he had an expectation in the story okay and when we come from a place of expectation we actually are blocking 
if you will, what it is that we desire most and what it is that's meant to come with us. And so it goes back again to that quote with um, Osho having to do with vibrating with it. If you're vibrating with it and you're in that relaxed place, then you are in a place of intention where you set an intention and you release the attachment to the outcome yet you are attached you're not attached or detached you're actually just in this resonance of being like buddha so you're you're really in that place where you're no longer expecting something to happen where if it, it doesn't happen you're going to be angry about it or frustrated or whatnot and this is also where this gentleman's sense of frustration and uh, pain and suffering and then the bliss and epiphany that comes with it now the aspect of when what he says when he is through all of this that he hopes that his heart will open once more and that he can love this world and everything and you know, everyone in it basically is what he was saying is something that I just listened to again recently I listened to it when it first came out a while ago it's a Greg Braden video and I will leave the link for it um, below in the video description for it because what he talks about is and this is what this gentleman is going through because when you come to this place where you are kind of left wondering well what was all of this for why did I go through all of this pain and suffering and bliss and epiphany and and all of these ups and downs and everything else and and I really feel like closing my heart and you know I really don't feel like loving this world and basically WTF um you know I really just you're in this place of it's kind of like a combination of anger yet at the same time it's it's kind of like a I'm closing my heart kind of thing and I know because I went through this myself and what Greg Braden talks about in this video is is that it's a releasing of the old of the old ways of being and he talks about it in such a beautiful way and so I really invite you to wa to watch this video and really listen to it and take it deeply within you and there's a, a small exercise that he talks about in it too that I also invite you to do as well and you can apply it to anything including the twin soul union and so what he also talks about is the grieving process that we are to actually grieve and let go in the letting go process of the twin soul dynamic we are actually to grieve it and that's what's happening with this gentleman with this with his heart where he feels that he his heart is closed and that he can't love the world again and whatnot because he's actually going through the grieving process now I believe there's what five steps I think there is to the grieving process I don't remember all of them but I do remember that there's you know anger and then there's like this bargaining that you do and you eventually you know come to forgiveness and acceptance and so on one hand this gentleman in having this impersonal sense of peace about it all has come to acceptance of the situation with his twin soul and then there's also still this other part of him that is in the last stages of the grieving process that is got to come through to the rest of the acceptance on that so that he can open his heart again so for this gentleman and I know he will be listening because I told him I was doing this video in essence for him uh, but for all of course um, I invite you sweet dearest one to embrace this wisdom here and for all of you to embrace this wisdom and to take a look at the grieving process and understanding it and going through it fully and completely until its fruition because what tends to happen is is when you go through it completely and I have done this your heart then opens again because the reason that your heart is closed is because you haven't completed the grieving process related to the twin soul dynamic now does this mean for some twin souls that they will never be with their twin soul 
for some it will be as I said earlier um, it's because you are free from being in your last life now the other issue with it is is that there are incomplete levels and this again goes back to Sanat Kumara there are incomplete levels of understanding and so the, the grieving process is a part of that now there's also issues with um, the beautifulness of the ego and actually coming to love your ego and integrating it into oneness and there's another video that I invite you to listen to that is a part of this and it's uh, Matt Kahn's video on um, understanding the ego and the way he speaks about the ego in relating it to coming into oneness which is what I talk about in my book stepping into spiritual oneness um, that I published nine years ago he says it in a different way and again this goes back to what I said earlier about we can say the same thing in other uh, using other words and it just means the same thing and I look at this at beauty that Matt Kahn came across with of this channel that he brought through about understanding the ego and I was able to see that even though he says it in a different way he says it in this most amazingly beautiful way that mirrors although the words are different and the vibration is the same so I honor Matt Kahn for this and it was quite beautiful and I will leave the link for that as well and I would invite you to utilize this as a tool for your healing and coming through the twin soul dynamic so in essence what it really boils down to is, is that you're not getting over anything as in what we term the word as usually of oh just get over it you know you'll be over it no the reason that I chose this title is is that it's like getting over a hurdle coming to what we call from an earthly standpoint a higher level of understanding a higher level of knowing so the incomplete levels of understanding that is talked about in Sanat Kumara is getting over you're getting over you're going up the ladder if you will you're going to the next rung you are climbing over the mountain okay you are you are climbing over the hurdle in which keep that keeps you from being the love that you are because what twin soul union, twin soul relationship, twin soul dynamic is about, yes, there is romance as part of it. And it's not romance in the sense of what we term in earthly relationships. And I have spoken about this and written about this in my many articles on Facebook. There's many things that I've talked about this before many a times, my videos here and whatnot. The component of ro what romance really is, is not that it's all bliss and love and flowers and what have you. It's the essence of true divine love. That's what it is. And as I said earlier, it comes from within and then, you know, with source, with source, within, and then with your twin soul and with all. And so when you are in that resonance and you're vibrating with it, and you're relaxed you may or may not feel them anymore in the same way that you did before so you're vibrating with them instead and also in this level of acceptance and completing the last layers of the grieving process as well so that you can come to open your heart again now also in the context of what I know this gentleman intuitively I can feel within he is saying because as you know I often can hear the message behind the message in what someone is writing which again goes back to what I was saying it's not so much the words it's the vibration the energy that the resonance the harmonics the heart coherence 
that you are feeling and vibrating with within what somebody is saying. Um, Source has often given it to me as the message behind the message and is something that I've done with my children when I raised them um, and also something I honed in very um, acutely with my twin soul even more so because I could always feel the vibrational essence, the resonance, the heart coherence behind and through the messages that he would send me. So if he texted me something that was, you know, very simple, um, I could actually take from that. And it wasn't me imagining something. It was me actually tuning into his heart, to his soul, the soul that we share as twin souls. And so in tuning into that with this gentleman as well, I can also sense that he has this feeling that he may never be able to open his heart again. And what I can say to you, dear soul, is that you will. If anyone knows about a heart being closed and how it was opened, um, it's me. I've been through that. So I deeply understand where you are coming from. And it is because I've experienced it myself and have come out the other side of it or gotten over, in other words, climbed over that hurdle to where I now know that your heart will open again. And you will have that love in another form of another relationship, another union. Will it ever be the same as your twin soul? No. Will you come together with your twin soul in another life? Yes. But you will open your heart again and love because it's who you are. You can't not be who you are, which is love itself. And when the pain of having your heart closed is so great enough, you will make the shift. And you will make the shift because your desire, your calling to be who you really are, which is love, will then be greater than the pain. Because pain pushes you until vision pulls you, as Michael Beckwith says. So I invite you to create the vision both within your being, your subconscious being, within your dream time and within your subconscious programming that you will and are this love and open heart again. And also within your conscious life so that you are doing both. And it will happen because you will make it happen. Not because you are forcing it to happen and making it happen, but simply because, again, you're free from seeking it or searching for it or asking for it or knocking or demanding. You're relaxing. And if you relax, it comes. And if you relax, it's there. If you relax, you start vibrating with it, as Osho said. Now the last thing that I will place into this video for you, beautiful souls, my co-creator souls of love and light, in relation to the vibrating with it, relaxing, coming into that resonance, is within the movie The Shift, Wayne Dyer's movie, it was formerly known as Ambition to Meaning, and I originally saw it when it first came out as Ambition to Meaning. It's now called The Shift. Within The Shift, he speaks of a miraculous healing that occurred for him in his knee. The day that he wanted more for another than he wanted for himself. And so paraphrasing his words, in essence what he says in that movie is, Wanting more for another than you want for you, that is God realization. So taking it to the next level of how you can create this into your life 
I invite you to think of your twin soul. It, place them in your heart as they are already in your heart. Or if it's someone else in your life that you're struggling with or someone else that you actually really deeply love. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to utilize it in the twin soul essence. Think of your twin soul and write down in format what you wish for them in wanting more for them than you do for yourself. Because yes, in essence, it is wanting it for yourself because you are the same soul. You share the same soul. As Aristotle said, twin souls are, or actually what he says is love or friendship, is one soul in two bodies. So, in essence, you wanting this is actually wanting it for you. But do it from the context. Be it from the context. Vibrate with it in the context that you want this more for them, for your twin soul, than you do for yourself. Just like Wayne Dyer did when he wanted more for this gentleman. He carried him up a flight of stairs knowing that his knee in no way was not able to be able to do this. Yet it was and he received a healing and his knee has been fine ever since that day. So think of your twin soul. Bring them into your heart resonance and write down what you wish for them. And then at night dream it. During the day, look at this writing and see it. Feel it during the day and then dream it at night. So you're doing it consciously during the day and then subconsciously unconscious, the unconscious mind in dream time. Visualize that. Feel it deeply in your heart. And then know that that happiness that you wish for them is also here for you. That love and open heart that you wish for them, your twin soul, wishing for your twin soul, is what you also have there for you. May you be always that open heart, for it is who you are. Be love now, for it is who you are. Espavo.